Hello guys, welcome to Piping Engineers. We are back with our new video. Our today's video is on the interview questions that are asked in your piping interview. So in today's video, we will see about the probable questions that are asked in your interview for your piping engineer, for the interview in construction engineer or for piping designer. So guys, for more videos and updates, please like, follow and subscribe to our channel. So let's begin our today's video and see what are the probable questions that can be asked in your piping interview? So, moving on to first, so this is the most basic and important question that is asked in each and every interview. Which is the ASME code that is followed for design for piping system in process piping refineries and chemical industry? So guys, which code is followed for process piping? It is ASME B31.3. So 31.3 is used for designing your process piping. And if someone asks you, which code is followed for your power piping? So for power piping, SME B31.1 is followed. So both of these codes, they are used in your process industry and in your piping industry. And this can be termed as the Bible for piping and process industry. So moving on to next, how can flanges be classified based on pressure temperature rating? So guys, you all would be knowing that if we need to purchase a flange, we need to determine its pressure temperature rating. And based on pressure temperature rating, a flange is selected for a particular service and for a particular operation. So what is the classification of pressure temperature ratings that is available in the market? So they are, flanges are generally available from class 150 to class 2500, covering your 300, 400, 600, 900 and 1500. So guys, the point here is, your classes vary according to your pressure and temperature rating and as per your material also. So if you select some material, so it will be having some a pressure temperature rating at a particular particular point and if your pressure or temperature changes its pressure temperature rating would also get changed so moving on to next uh, which type of gasket is re recommended for high pressure and high temperature application so one of the important question that is asked if you are going for your power plant or your steam application interview so the gasket material that we use is spiral wound metallic gasket basically in this gasket there is a metallic insertion inside the gasket and it is spirally wanted so moving on to next what should be the radius of long radius elbows so you would all be knowing that there are two types of elbows one is your long radius elbow and another is your short radius radius elbow so what is the radius of the long radius elbow so long radius elbow has a radius of 1.5 d where d it is the diameter of the pipe so and what is the if someone asks you what is the what should be the radius of short elbow radius so it is 1d again where d is the diameter of the pipe so one of the important question and what is the impact of selecting this long radius and short radius elbows so if you select long radius elbow you will be having a higher curvature higher curvature will lead in lower pressure loss and if you select a short radius elbow again there would be a shorter curvature and your pressure losses will be more so one of the one of the thing that while selecting a elbow is this which is kept in mind so moving on to next uh, what is the use of stma 53 and stma 106 grade pipe so one of the two these two are the most important pipes in metal materials that you would have seen in your if you are in piping industry and the basic question so the basic use of these pipes is if we select a pipe material as stma 53 stma 53 pipes are mainly used for utility services so guys what are the utility services they are used for your water compressed air low night low pressure nitrogen or your low pressure oxygen so we go for stma 53 but if we go if we go for high pressure and temperature services we go for this stma 106 grade b basically these pipes are of alloy steel so if you are selecting your it for your uh, steam basically for steam this material is selected for your high pressure and high temperature services stm106 is used so guys moving on to our question so what are the commonly used destructive tests so one of the important question if you are going for a quality inspector test uh, quality inspector job so the tests that we follow that are commonly used for destructive tests termed as destructive tests are your tension test bend test impact test and hardness test so what is a destructive test guys destructive test is if your spicing if your specimen is destroyed so this test is known as destructive test so you would have seen in your college days or in your in your college days on universal testing machine you would have seen that stress strain curve 
so that specimen which is being tested in universal testing machine is destroyed so test tension test bend test and impact test hardness test all these tests leads to the destruction of the specimen or the body which is being tested so moving on to next what is the normal upstream and downstream straight length of orifice flow medium so guys here the point is what is upstream and what is downstream so suppose if your flow is flowing from this direction so this is your upstream direction so if you install something here so when this flow crosses this instrument so this will be its downstream so where the entering point to the direction from which it is entering is your upstream and from the point which it is going out or moving out is your downstream so there for for orifice meter to provide a good reading to provide a normal or an okay reading there there must be some distance between your upstream and downstream so there must be some straight line because if they if you will be having some bends or some walls in your upstream or downstream then the flow may get fluctuated and the value of flow would not be the correct value so they, there is a some upstream and downstream length requirement so what is it it is generally upstream is kept 15d and downstream is kept 5d where d is the diameter of the pipe on which your orifice flow meter will be installed so guys moving on to next <laughs> What is the difference between a machine and a stud bolt? So machine bolts guys has head on one end and nut on other end while stud bolts have nuts on both ends. So they can be tightened from both ends while your machine bolt can be tightened from one end itself. So let's see the next one. What is provided in gas lines to remove condensate? If, again if you are going for a steam or a power plant interview or if you are going for any steel plant interview also what is provided in gas lines to remove gas condensate so guys gas condensate is removed with the help of drip ports drip ports they are generally installed on on your lower portion of the pipelines and what happens is the gas the condensate which is moving with the gas gets gets uh, separated with the help of this drip ports from your moving gas and if what happens if this condensate or this moisture goes into your equipment so your equipment may get destroyed or you may own, you won't be getting the best burning efficiency so this condensate needs to be removed at some spaces and separate locations so moving on to next guys what is a fatigue failure a basic btec question that is being asked if you are going for a structural engineer or again for a job of a quality manager so fatigue failure occurs when the body is subjected to prolonged deplication of sustained load or tensile compressive load cycle so guys if a body is being uh, subjected to prolonged deplication means your load is not being changed and if it is kept constant for so sustained load or tensile compressive load cycle for a very long period of time so there may be chances that your body gets failed so that is your fatigue failure so let's see our next our next question is what do you mean by cavitation of pump so cavitation of pump you would have read in your btec also in your fluid mechanics the basic question so cavitation of pump is generally when the vapor pressure of when the vapor pressure of a, of a liquid falls below so the liquid liquid starts boiling so what happens due to which the liquid starts boiling and bubbles are formed so when these bubbles they erode when these bubbles they are exploded at the surface of the impeller so what they do they erode the surface of the impeller or the surface of the system so this erosion process due to low vapor pressure is known as cavitation so guys we while installing a process while installing a pump we calculate npsh available so we always try to maintain our net positive suction head available more than the net positive suction head required so that we have covered in a separate video you can see our video and this is the process this is the phenomena which which should be controlled so that cavitation of a pump can be avoided because cavitation can uh, hamper not only the pump it can hamper your piping system as well because lot of vibrations lot of sounds that will be occurring in your piping system so this is cavitation of the pump so next question how flanges can be classified based on facing so flanges they are flat phase your raised phase uh, well neck flanges, slip on flanges, threaded flanges, socket weld flange, lap joint flange, blind flange. So depending upon the application, depending upon the requirement, we select a flange and that flange is based upon the our system requirement. So these type of flanges they are available in the market. So moving on to next, 
what is the range of cooling tower so guys you would have heard you would have learned there are two things in a cooling tower one is range and another is approach so here what i am asking about it is the range of cooling tower so range is your inlet temperature minus outlet temperature so suppose if your cooling tower is an entering temperature of 45 degree celsius and your water is coming out at 40 degree celsius so 45 minus 40 degrees so 5 degree celsius is your range and what will be the approach of your cooling tower approach is your outlet temperature minus your wet bulb temperature so that will be your approach so this is the basic difference between range and approach of a cooling tower so moving on to next guys which material is used for temperatures above 426 degrees celsius so suppose if you are having a steam line hp steam line which piping material will be you using for your 426 degree temperature so we will be going for alloy steel material so only at alloy steel material should be used for such high temperature application alloy steel materials like p91 p22 they are the general materials that are used in your steam piping so these materials can withstand such high temperature and high pressure so let's see our last question for the day which type of material is used for corrosive fluid so corrosive fluid uh, you would have been in your process industry there are many slurries your soft water is also very corrosive so which type of material do we use to transport those fluids or to kept those fluids so this is a very general question and we use it find its application in our home also so we go for stainless steel so you would be knowing that your mild steel is forced to have corrosion but your stainless steel is corrosion free so stainless steel materials are used for your corrosion fluid so guys i hope you would have seen the questions that can be asked in your interview and if you prepare for these questions i hope you might get some of the help and in between our next video i'll be bringing one more video for the piping interview questions uh, uh, in coming days so guys i if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and guys thank you for watching the video thanks a lot